What happens when a botch occurs the moment you're debuting a new character? What hot? I spit. Did you see that? It's fucking flying out of my mouth. What happens when a botch occurs the moment you're debuting a new character? What happens when that character is supposed to strike fear in the hearts of the toughest heels? And that botch puts him flat on his face. I'll tell you what happens. Character gone, career gone for the most part. But at least we got the mother of all botches. It's doubtful that the moment you voted on for the most botch of all time will shock you at all. The guy falls on his face. The hood comes. I mean, that, that, that's that's shocking. That that should be the most shocking thing. Sting will tell you you want to see something shocking. I mean, come on. I mean, that Lost in Space had better shit than that. I mean, that's so fucking rotten. Ugh. Yeah, I think that might have killed WCW actually. That was fantastic. I dare anyone to go and repeat that moment. I'd love to see it. Oh, uh, yeah, that's just horrible. That's just whole thing's horrible. Do you know Fred Lottman? Who? The Shockmaster. <laughs> Shockmaster. He's sexy in that Stormtrooper mask. When I see the entrance to the Shockmaster, in my mind, I hear the Benny Hill theme. The, the theme to the Benny Hill show. The only thing, except the only thing cool about Benny Hill was, you know, it was the broads with the big jugs. Don't do it live. <laughs> Don't ever do it live. Plus, yeah, go. Oh, thanks, Sid, for trying. Uh, also, when you create the wall, the fake wall on the T talk show, you don't put the stud on the bottom. <laughs> you put it on the side. We were doing live Bash at the Beach, live, so there was no do overs. Um, and the way the set was, it was two by four studs. And plus, it was made taller, so there was uh, right here at my knee, just below my knee, a, uh, a, uh, a two by four going across with additional studs going down. So the wall was constructed, you know, f five eighths sheet rock. It was done like you would do a wall in your house. I, I don't know where he is, where he went, but you know, it definitely killed the gimmick. So, so the Shockmaster's entrance coming through the wall. I'm not convinced it was a botched moment. I almost think that somebody in the back, whoever told him to do that, said, let's just fall over, man. You know, I don't know if it was a botched moment or not. It looked like it could have been a botched moment, but it also looks like it could have been a conceived botched moment. And the way the thing was supposed to read out, I bust this wall out. It wasn't a gimmicked wall. I bust the walls, the wood, and, you know, and uh, when I went to the station where I was at, you know, I was to bust through, come through the building, and, you know, the promo would take place, you know, into the set. I was the mystery partner that was coming into this deal, and they were getting ready for the pay-per-view that was coming up. Well, what happened was uh, my grand was sitting there, gave me the cue. He says, Fred, you're going to have to hit this very hard to come through the wall. So I double axe handled overhead, and I'm a pretty strong guy, and blew the wall out when they gave me the cue. So all I was supposed to do is blow it out and step into the set. So it blew out except where the crossboard was. And I hit it so hard this way that pretty basically like a teeter-totter. Poop. What was Sid saying? That's what I want to know. That's what many Sid promos. What, what is he saying? If you were to put this on your head, when they did this mask originally, the flake, this is the original deal here, the flake on the outside, okay, is obviously loose. You see how the holes are drilled here, all right? Well, there was a problem with the flake coming through. So how, how do we keep that from falling in Fred's eyes? It's very little vision just like this, okay? So what we'll do is they had uh, Jenny Ingalls, who was the secretary at the time uh, in the office, they took her pantyhose off, cut the tan pantyhose, and glued them over the inside of this also. I mean, it's a good thing he's wearing that helmet, you know, or you see his red face from embarrassment, you know? Hey, Mom, I'm going to be on pay-per-view tonight. 
oh, that's so good. Let's get the family around the TV. We'll you know, order dinner. And we'll see our son make a big debut on pay-per-view and <laughs> fall out of frame with the uh, Star Wars helmet wrapped in tinfoil, sparkly with the leather vest. No, fur vest. Hi, fellas. I just don't understand the, the pyro effect either because it wasn't anywhere near the wall. It's amazing. I, I, I'm sure that the, the, the gimmick would have went down anyway, but it, it literally and figuratively fell on its face. They should have jumped him. They should have beat the living daylights at him. I mean, what? Uh, I mean, take away the fact that you know, I'm sure he wasn't supposed to trip. But what was it, what was it supposed to come out of it? And how are those guys keeping a straight face? What you have to do in professional wrestling. And we've all, we've, you do what Booker did. If it's fucked up and funny, if you ain't in on the laugh, they're laughing at you. You know it's fucked up. If you fucking horse laugh it, I, it it's like anything else. At least you're distancing yourself from the absurdity of acting like that guy didn't just trip in front of me, scramble and put a fucking helmet on while a voiceover was talking for him. The worst thing you can do is act like, well, that didn't fucking happen. It's dead. I can't believe all those guys just stood there and just didn't. I would have had to, to charge them or something, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, that's just crazy. No, no, no. Stand there and laugh. They did exactly what they should have done. Because if they would have done anything else, they would have looked like idiots. I might go over and put the boots on them. At this point, my career would be like, fuck this. Field goal kick that fucker. Because he, I mean, he's dead in the air. He's, he's dead. He's fucked. You might as well get over. Because <laughs> he ain't getting over. I don't know. Because I don't know what the object was. I mean, because you can't really be scared of him at that point. You know, yeah, I don't know. I, I am surprised Sid to, to just go over there and start putting the boots to him. Sid ain't afraid to go into business for himself. What could have been done to save that? Nothing. It was great. We remember it. It was a great botched moment. Why save it? I, I think had he come through there, if he saw the expression on the opponent's faces there, Sid Vicious and the other guys that were there, they were very serious. So maybe they were expecting him to fall through that. I don't know. This popped off my head like a champagne cork. So we're on live TV. I, it's already, a normal person would be off, you know. I turn, I'm reaching for the helmet, put it back on my head, so it's popped right up to do the promo. At least it's a screw up, stuff happens, but to go through and get the thing where it's supposed to be. At first I looked at it because I don't know what year it was, but at first I looked at it, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, oh, that shouldn't have just, that definitely shouldn't have just happened. Anybody that's ever watched the video can see the reaction from not only the crowd, but from the individuals if they read their lips. It was uh, truly a shocking moment in wrestling history. Didn't Flair say something like, damn, he fell on his ass? Didn't he say that? Like, wasn't it like, oh, it's barely audible. Somebody, somebody said, oh my God, he fell on his ass. Doesn't somebody, oh, go, you hear like Ric Flair go, oh shit. Mm -hmm. Top box, yeah. And what about, how's, why, what, how's that other thing not on that spot? What about some of those classic uh, Dungeon of Doom promos? They had to be botched, even though they were intended to be botched, because they were Awful. To not agree with you, I'd have to uh, come up with something better. All right, yeah, it's kind of hard to beat that. He, he, I mean, he screwed after that. Yeah, that's that's got to be it, right? Yeah, that's a that's a hard one to top. I can't I can't really think of one better than that. That that that's it. Yeah. Well. Wasn't there a spot, though, there in the Yeti match where he was humping somebody from behind? Who was he humping? Oh. That could, that, yeah. That could, it's got to get at least honorable mention. Yeah. And that was like Dusty's brother-in-law. Fred Hoffman? Yeah, he's like Dusty's brother-in-law. That's why they couldn't just, that's why he got the fucking deal in the first place. There's reasons why certain people make it higher in the industry and others a lot of it has to do with like intelligence quotient and just aptitude things like that and just some guys with the physical tools just are lacking in all those other ingredients
I had to drive back to uh, Tampa where I was living at the time that night, upset, you know. But then it would have been like a, 12, a four, uh, 24 a case beer night kind of deal. That is number one on the Mount Rushmore of fucking botches. In all these categories, including botchamania here, we remember the botched moments. It becomes part of what we remember in wrestling. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about it today. The fans always get it right. What happens when a botch occurs the moment you're debuting a new character? What hop? I spit. Did you see that? It's fucking flying out of my mouth. What happens when a botch occurs the moment you're debuting a new character? What happens when that character is supposed to strike fear in the hearts of the toughest heels and that botch puts him flat on his face? I'll tell you what happens. Character gone, career gone for the most part. But at least we got the mother of all botches. It's doubtful that the moment you voted on for the most botch of all time will shock you at all. The guy falls on his face. The hood comes. I mean, that, that, that's that's shocking. That that should be the most shocking thing. Sting will tell you you want to see something shocking. I mean, come on. I mean, that Lost in Space had better shit than that. I mean, that's so fucking rotten. Ugh. Yeah, I think that might have killed WCW, actually. That was fantastic. I dare anyone to go and repeat that moment. I'd love to see it. Oh, uh, yeah, that's just horrible. That's just whole thing's horrible. Do you know Fred Lottman? Who? The shock master. <laughs> Shockmaster. He's sexy in that Stormtrooper mask. When I see the entrance to the Shockmaster, in my mind, I hear the Benny Hill theme. The, the theme to the Benny Hill show. The only thing, except the only thing cool about Benny Hill was, you know, was the broads with the big jugs. Don't do it live. <laughs> Don't ever do it live. Plus, yeah, go, oh, thanks, Sid, for trying. Uh, also, when you create the wall, the fake wall, on the T talk show, you don't put the stud on the bottom. <laughs> you put it on the side. We were doing live Bash at the Beach, live, so there was no do-overs. Um, and the way the set was, it was two by four studs. And plus, it was made taller, so there was uh, right here at my knee, just below my knee, a, uh, a, uh, a two by four going across with additional studs going down. So the wall was constructed, you know, five-eighths sheet rock. It was done like you would do a wall in your house. I, I don't know where he is, where he went, but, you know, it definitely killed the gimmick. So, so the Shockmaster's entrance coming through the wall, I'm not convinced it was a botched moment. I almost think that somebody in the back, whoever told him to do that, said, let's just fall over, man. You know, I don't know if it was a botched moment or not. It looked like it could have been a botched moment, but it also looks like it could have been a conceived botched moment. And the way the thing was supposed to read out, I bust this wall out. It wasn't a gimmicked wall. I bust the walls, the wood, and, you know, and uh, when I went to the station where I was at, you know, I was to bust through, come through the building, and, you know, the promo would take place, you know, into the set. I was the mystery partner that was coming into this deal. And they were getting ready for the pay-per-view that was coming up. Well, what happened was uh, my grand was sitting there, gave me the cue. He says, Fred, you're going to have to hit this very hard to come through the wall. So I double axe handled overhead, and I'm a pretty strong guy, and blew the wall out when they gave me the cue. So all I was supposed to do is blow it out and step into the set. 